there. I am Heather King. I'm a writer, a speaker, a columnist, a workshop giver. And um, I'd like to invite you to a new project that I'm embarking upon, and I'm calling it Desire Lines, Arts, Divine Intoxication, Faith. Um, I'm going to read the uh, definition of desire lines. So you're sort of uh, situated. Desire lines or paths are the names given by urban planners to what happens when one person's impulsive shortcut encourages others to follow, creating informal, unmapped channels through a city. Desire lines have been called free will waves, pirate paths, social trails, beast trails, paths that have made themselves a record of civil disobedience and beautiful poetic marks of democracy. They indicate the yearning of those wishing to walk, of giving feedback with our feet. So obviously there's a, I, I mean, I happen to be a huge walker and a, and a big uh, promoter <laughs> of walking. Um, but, uh, but obviously the metaphorical, uh, sort of layer of desire lines is what I'm getting at. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a writer and a, and a speaker, but really I'm a stumbling and yet ardent follower of Christ. I'm a Catholic convert. And I'm really, uh, uh, this project is really to bring us into a deeper relationship, invite us all to a deeper relationship with Christ. Uh, if we've already met him, um, either way, with the deepest desires of our hearts, with each other, with our vocations, and and with our culture, our place in this, uh, I think, increasingly ideological um, culture that doesn't leave any room for nuance, complexity, and, re and really for reality, the reality of our experiences, of our hearts, of what our our deepest being tells us is true. So, um, and I hope, I want to start out with a, a offering a half day workshop. I hope to spin it eventually into an eight week, sort of three hour sessions once a week. And it will um, entail uh, preparatory reading. And then I'll give some sh a series of short talks. And then we'll have a writing prompt right in, in class, uh, writing and sharing and a kind of discussion um and yeah and i want to the arts have to do with the fact that for me yeah just my deepest my our, i think the human longing for transcendence is clearly uh w one way to seek that beauty and truth and goodness is through the arts um either uh, studying, sort of studying and participating in the arts, or, or an actual vocation as an artist, which turned out to be my thing. And uh, so, I, if you're if you're looking, I just want to, you know, I want to say, if you're looking for Christ, um, I suppose in a sense this is a way of of uh, my way of evangelizing. Evangelize actually means to spread the good news. Um, angel there's an angel in evangelize angel means messenger i mean i'm far from an angel but but the point is my um the freedom the joy in the midst of the suffering of the human condition the sense of adventure of excitement of an ever unfolding mystery and story and this desire to enter by the narrow gate um all of all of the fruit of my own um, ongoing conversion. I just am dying to share with people. And um, just just a little bit by way of background of how I came to Christ. I was, um, I'm a huge alcoholic. I, I was, bo I was uh, born and raised in the coast of New Hampshire, small town, working class, uh, wonderful family um, that had been deeply affected, I think, as many of our families have by uh, by alcoholism. I I have the disease big time. So anyway, I had spent sort of twenty years um, just totally lost on a bar stool and picking up guys and 
looking for yearning and longing and looking for love and um, of course not sort of sabotaging myself at every step and, and deeply enthralled to um, this sort of, I have to say, alcoholism, whatever else it may be, is this kind of demonic, I don't think it's too strong a word, you know, possession. I mean, you're utterly enthralled to this malign power that is way greater than you. And that for me, it really did take a sort of supernatural um, help to be released from that bondage. But that, that's another, that's a whole other story that I've written uh, a, one book about and really informs all my work. Um, this great mercy of having been freed from that. But anyway, so I was newly sober. I I'd moved from the East Coast uh, to California. I had this law degree that I'd gotten while I was, that I had no real interest in and had gotten while I was just absolutely wasted. Um, and I passed a Massachusetts bar, the New Hampshire bar. I came out to California with my new husband. I was working as a lawyer in Beverly Hills, of all places. And, uh, and I had a real crisis of vocation slash conscience, uh, real existential crisis. I was so sober to be, I mean, so grateful to be sober. And, um, and I started to believe in this God who I, I wanted someone to thank. That was my first and, and maybe my forever deepest idea of God. And, um, and I was working in this law office and I realized this is not what I was made for. This is not what I was called, what I'm called to do. And what, and I was making money though for the first time in my life. I had health insurance for the first time in my life. I was in my early 40s. So I was not, it's not like I was 18 or 21 or something. Um, but this, what came up was this call of my heart to write that I'd had since I was probably six and learned to read. And, um, and what ensued was this kind of probably two or three year garden garden of Gethsemane sweating tears of blood experience where I um, really faced those those deep deep questions I looked around in my culture there was nothing in my culture that even remotely addressed them our culture is about money property prestige you choose choose your gender choose your uh, of course choose your job and and Christ is all, I mean, Catholicism is the total opposite. It's, you didn't choose me, I chose you to go and bear fruit that will last. It's a completely different and so much more glorious realm than the realm of our culture. Because um, instead of this sort of uh, victim oppressor paradigm that rules our culture, it's a free, I consent to lay down my life. I want to give everything that I have. And so it's a totally different center of gravity. And I brought the Gospels. I had this childhood Bible. I brought, I brought it with me to work. I read the Gospels, really. That is how I came to Christ. And um, the old school way as a sinner, I had a real bad track record. I had a lot of my conscience still. Um, as a sinner and as, a, and as someone who hungered for righteousness and if you hunger deeply enough you will find him and the gospels to me seriously were like they were like living water i mean i was no catholic friends no priest friend no one i found my way to a catholic mass i found my way to rcia the right of christian initiation for adults and i found my way to the church and i have i came in in 1996 and in spite of my ongoing terrible failings and shortcomings and tendency to obsession and compulsion, all kinds of uh, things by which, uh, yeah, that I still struggle with, but still I've never wavered. And uh, in, my, in my faith that Christ is the way, the truth and the life. And, uh, and so, as I said, there's a great freedom in there and the freedom is, comes from discipline. Um, if your vocation is an artist or whatever your vocation in Christ is, what happens is you will order your life to it. And therefore the teachings of the church, for instance, on marriage and the family, on money, on all kinds of things, on social justice, on everything that matters in this world will naturally, they will make total sense and your life, 
will order themselves naturally. And for that, me, that has meant I got uh, my marriage, I uh, was divorced and had the marriage annulled. Not that, not that you have to do that, but it so happens. I've written about all this stuff. Um, that's what happened. I mean, everything, you undergo a pruning, a sort of severe or what seems severe pruning in order to flower forth. And so all these years later, I, um, I, I get to live out the desire, the deepest desire of my heart. I'm a writer. I have, I think, 12 books now. I write a weekly arts and culture column for the last six years for Angeles News, the Archdiocesan newspaper of LA. I write a monthly column for Magnificat on a uh, Magnificat magazine, a little magazine of liturgy and reflection. And um, that's on, uh, it's called Credible Witnesses. So a credible witness by their definition is someone who witnesses to the faith is dead. Um, don't worry, it'll happen to all of us. And, and has not yet been um, canonized. They can be in the process, but not yet canonized. And so together, and I'm active. I have a fellowship of recovering alcoholics in which I'm very, very active, as well as some other, um, <laughs> yeah, some other fellowships. Um, I have a family. I have a wide circle of. I have I've had a blog for ten years, so I hear from people all over the world. I've given writing workshops, so I have this life in which I feel so fully engaged, um, and that's what I'd sort of like to. Um, like to get across i have carte blanche sort of to write about and explore what i want what what sets me on fire and so i'd love to get um introduce you all to some of the people who i who lead the lead these um they may or may not be catholic most of them are some kind of creative um dancers and surfers and composers and cellists and people who um painters who who live this kind of single-minded life of devotion to as servants of art and i think um not that you have to be an artist but again i think artists have a wonderful way of showing us what a life that is that is ordered to the one thing as Kierkegaard said the saint is the is the uh, individual who who wills the one thing so you will one thing it gets all whittled down and it's a total adventure that's what I want to get across that religion is not some boring stultifying set of pro forma exercises that you tack onto your life it is if you've come to Christ through your intellect I submit that's a very shallow conversion. I mean, you really come not even through your heart, but through your bowels. I mean, it, it, it's to the marrow of your bones. And uh, anyway, so uh, I will um, have uh, flyers and, and uh, get, the, get the word out through social media and my blog. And uh, so I just wanted to invite you all. And uh, I'm... It's 7.44 a.m. and I personally am uh, off to mass. So <laughs> I hope to see you all, um, or at least some of you. And, uh, you know, and let's just get together and see what unfolds. Um, let's find a new way to spread the good, spread the good news. Okay, thank you so much.